All right, I was just taking apart some old piece of equipment just to uh, steal the parts out of it. Uh, there's a nice, uh, nice rotary switch, ceramic, uh, ceramic plates and everything. So definitely, uh, definitely quality. Um, so the reason I'm shooting the videos, I thought there was a couple things that I thought were, were interesting and vintage and, uh, We'll just document them so they don't ever disappear. <laughs> let's see, let's start with this one. Uh, this was the power supply board. Uh, there's some really old, really old capacitors in this thing. And uh, there's this uh, really weird uh, multi-pin device here, which I guess is the voltage regulator, but I've never seen, never seen such a device. Uh, we'll take the power, take the uh, heat sink off it and see if we can get a part number off of that. But uh, the cool thing about this board is this. So this was a board and this is a board, but this board holds these things. So it's like a, a store-bought uh, edge connector. Now, in the same product, they used this edge connector. So I guess this one was better somehow. I don't know, maybe maybe more wiping for higher currents or something. I I don't know. But anyway, they chose they chose to use this thing on the power supply and this thing on the amplifier. It's kind of an amplifier type of thing. Um, so yeah, raise your hands if you've seen this thing before. Uh, I have never ever seen one. Uh, pretty strange. Everything's gold on gold, of course, back in the old days when gold was cheap. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, interesting. <laughs> very, very, very interesting. All right, let's uh, let's see if we can't uh, open this up somehow. I can't recall a voltage regulator that would have that many pins in it. Unless it's some kind of multi-purpose. Uh, uh, of course, this side's going to fight me. The other side was fine. This side's going to fight me. Because it says, oh, you're filming and you're not paying us royalties. We're going to make your life difficult. There we go. All right. All right. Well, they used heat sink grease, which is nice. Tried not to get it everywhere. Uh, let's see if I can wipe that off. Oh, RCA from the way back days. It's an RCA 4194TK. All right, let's see if we can uh, if we can find such a device. Where's my phone? I don't know where my phone is. All right, I think I read the part number wrong. I thought it said RCA, but it just said RC. RC4194 dual tracking voltage regulator. Uh, three watt. Uh, let's see here, why isn't it going down? Uh, dual polarity tracking regulators, 200 milliamps. Uh, so yeah, uh, it's just, uh, oops. It's just, uh, let me get my, my mouse here. Hmm. Yeah, here's the plus, minus, minus. Yeah, so the minus V out and a plus V out. So the one path here is this away from, from right to left. And at the bottom, uh, it is from left to right. Goes goes this away. So anyway, yeah. Uh, interesting. Yeah, there it is. It is a TO what? <laughs> Doesn't say. Like a TO66 type of package, but with way too many pins. 
Anyway, yeah, look up this data sheet. It's, it's pretty fascinating. Maybe I should do a video just on this data sheet. It's got lots of, lots of cool stuff to talk about. I'll put that in the back of my head. Anyway, it has a dual tracking regulator by Fairchild. Although it says RA, it says maybe Raytheon made this one. I don't know. Okay, well, that was the power supply. Let's look at the other, uh, the other bit of it is here. And uh, again, they use this uh, cinch connector, uh, just a regular old edge connector. And you say, well, that's a weird, that's a weird shape board. <laughs> well, on the back of the instrument, so the back of the instrument came here and this little thing was on the back and you could pull it out and this thing came out. And it was a filter. You can see there's an R and a C and maybe another C in there and another R. Yeah, two R's, two C's. Um, and it would slide into the product like so. So you could change the different, oh, in fact, it says right on it here. It was a low pass filter, 10 kilohertz. So these components here were chosen to roll the rest of the circuit off to 10 kilohertz. They shared the connector though. That's the fascinating part shared the connector. So uh, it also means that these two boards <laughs> shared the connector as well. Okay, everybody, everybody shared the connector. Um, and the connector is weird. We'll get to that in a second. So anyway, yeah, these cute little boards here. Uh, I love the, uh, I love the little heat sinks. I, so, I used to save those all the time and then I never ended up ever using any of them. <laughs> Because <laughs> everything, the time passed and everybody, everybody went to different packages and stuff. But these little, uh, these little uh, spring on, uh, spring on heat sinks are just cute. I always, I always enjoyed them. They have a little heat sink, heat sink grease on them as well. Interesting. So this is just a two and forty thirty five. Yeah, just a homebrew little, little thing. Uh, Another interesting thing about these boards is, uh, let's see, not this one. This one just has a stand up. So in the old days, uh, they would, I'll just pop this off. I should desolder it, but I'm just gonna pop it off for sake of going fast. Um, so you would put little spacers underneath your transistors. So they wouldn't short out because the cases, kind of the cases, kind of went everywhere. So you'd get these little plastic doohickeys to stick in there, space your space your transistor off the board. So that was kind of that was kind of fun. They used a little bit of some kind of goo to lock down the uh, the adjustments here. I don't know. What, it's real brown and crusty now, so I'm not sure what they use their shellac or something. I don't know. It's kind of strange. Uh, 1975, yeah, maybe 1975. So here's a great example of a, a single-sided, well, that's a dual-sided PC board, but uh, how you uh, uh, mush the uh, mush the leads over before you solder them down. So yeah, back in the old days, you would do that. Makes it hard to work on, but yeah, smash them down, solder them down. Okay. Uh, let's look at the other board here. The other board is interesting. Look at the, look at the edge connector. It's got this mouse bite in it and it's got this steel pin that's sticking out. It looks steel, uh, it's po poking out. There's an, there's a little insulator here, a little copper thing doohickey there, here that's soldered onto the ground connections here. It almost makes it look like it's a little, uh, an RF connector of some kind of weird thing. Look at the cinch connector. It's got this round pin in it. Now it's not coax, it's just a pin. It's just a single solder, single solder pin. But this thing goes on it like a so. Now, if I looked at it, I would say it's such a short run and you've already got two ground pins here and here. I bet you it doesn't really, if you just had a regular connector and you just ran the signal through that regular connector, I really don't think it's going to interrupt much. So I don't, it just seems like they spent more money than they need to. Anyway, comment below if you think that's true or not. 
Uh, the other thing interesting about this board is uh, you say, oh, here are those standoff things again. No, these aren't standoffs. These are sockets. They're little sockets made of little PC boards. So it's FR4 type of material with f with three little inserts, little little uh, pin pin socket inserts that this little PC board holds, and then you solder it into the board. So instead of soldering these three individual things in there, you had this little piece of plastic that or uh, uh, FR4 that would go in there for you. And might not even be FR4, it might just be fiberglass. Anyway, makes it easier to solder. So, so these. Uh, uh, here's here's a cool thing to talk about also. But yeah, all of these uh, all these things are on these cool cool things. Now look at this. This is another different type of uh, transistor package. You just don't say anymore. I'm not sure what what these were called. Uh, this is a two in. 3641. But yeah, just a weird, weird, instead of doing the regular T05 thing, they did this little, they're kind of ceramic. Yeah, I don't know, maybe better heat sinking. I don't know. Comment below if you know the difference, why they chose this over this. It was is one, this one had a big heat sink on it, remember? Maybe this one is just like kind of medium grade and without heat sink. I don't know. Kind of weird. Another, another cool socketed part. All right, let's go up to this this away. This here kind of smells like an op amp. Let's pull let's pull him out. Uh, he's on this nice Teflon uh, Teflon socket with all gold pin uh, all gold pins. Uh, any guesses? I have a guess, but I'm not sure. Get that magnifier. I would have guessed like a 741. Or uh, 709 or something. I don't know. So we'll take a look at it. Does this have markings on it? It does, but I don't recognize the. I don't recognize the writing. KQ5. Seven four. Seven four two one SC. I don't know. I don't know what that is. Oh. I can guess from the bottom though. It doesn't have enough pins to be an op amp. It just has three pins on this side and three pins on this side. So it is a matched pair of uh, of transistors all in one all in one package. So yeah, that's some type of matched pair. Now they used this fancy matched pair jobber, and then over here they've got two transistors on the same socket with a little piece of copper wrap on them to keep them at the same temperature. Um, yeah, see this little, this little C clamp, clamp it just goes over these, these two 90, TO92s, and this TO92s both plug into a uh, socket, and these are just two N3904s. Yeah. And so, yeah, go figure. I guess these are cheap, and they might have been good enough maybe for the second stage and not the first stage, and they still weren't quite good enough, so they put a little heat spreader on them to keep them at the same temperature. So anyway, a lot of fun things on this board. Uh, some capacitors. Yeah, a lot of fun things in this old, the old-timey stuff. Gold PC boards. Uh, 1970, no, 77. That's just a part number. I don't know. Do these have markings on what date? What date they were? 1976. Yeah, 1976. Uh, heat sink, heat sink grease gets everywhere. All right. So anyway, interesting. Uh, here's another one of those RC parts, a double, uh, Double transistor type of thing. Yeah, interesting. Let's pull this one off. Since we're here, let's be thorough. Let's make the let's make the uh, video even more boring. Uh. Ooh, he's a no name. He's a no name. Oh, here we go. 
it's a 2N3053. There were 2N3054s, 2N4053s, and a, the most famous one, 2N3055s. Yeah, so these were, uh, these were very common back in the day, and they're hard to find these days. I tried to find one the other day, and, well, the other day, like two years ago, and <laughs> they were hard to find. Anyway, there you go. Fun teardown for the day. Thank you.